Good day. My name is Tian Guldenhuis and in this video I would like to discuss another one of those very important subjects with you, namely the fear of the Lord. What is the fear of the Lord all about? Does it mean to be so afraid of God that you don't want to get close to Him? Or is there something more to the fear of the Lord according to the Word of God? Because we must read what the Bible tells us about this so that we can understand what the fear of the Lord is all about. But my brother and sister, it's always just about our Lord Jesus Christ. So let, let us pray together first. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you in this day. Thank you, Lord. We know the Bible says where two or three are gathered in my name, I am in their midst. So, Lord, we know you're here. We're busy with this recording, but you will also be there where people will be watching this video. And we pray that you alone will be glorified, Father. We pray that your Holy Spirit will take me out of the way, that I will not be the one speaking, but that your Holy Spirit will speak in and through me, and that all our hearts will be willing to receive the truth of the Word of God. And thank you, Lord, that you still give us the authority to say to Satan, we bind your works now. You will not steal this message from the ears of the children of God, and you will leave in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, now we pray that you will cover us with your blood. We pray that you will set up your angels around every place where people will be busy with this video and that you yourself will be a wall of fire around about us so that every place is a safe place. Thank you, Father, for your presence. Please take us by the hand and lead us now by your Holy Spirit. We ask it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, in this video, we're going to discuss the following eight points. Number one, what is the fear of the Lord? Number two, what is the fear of the Lord not? Number three, consequences of the fear of the Lord. Number four, Jesus and the fear of the Lord. Number five, you will be blessed. Number six, all that fear the Lord, praise Him. Number seven, there will come a day. And number eight, beware. And all who know me know I always start with this verse in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 13 that says, For we write none other things unto you than what ye read or acknowledge, and I trust ye shall acknowledge even to the end. And today we will read what the Bible says regarding the fear of the Lord. And you will see, we will be able to acknowledge, in other words, to understand what it says regarding the fear of the Lord. And God says, we can understand these things and acknowledge them. And we must acknowledge them even to the end. Because in Matthew 22 verse 29, Jesus said, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. And that, unfortunately, is the truth regarding most Christians. It was my fault as well. I did not know my scriptures. Why? Because I did not know the author of the scriptures. I was not in a personal, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. I was busy with dead religion. And hear me today, I always repeat it, religion is dead. Relationship with Jesus Christ is life. Good life now and eternal life that waits but only when I get to know my scriptures, because I got to know the author of the scriptures, do I get to know the power of God. The power of God written in His Word regarding my marriage, my finances, my relationship with my children, whatever the case may be. But then I have to know my scriptures, because I know the author of the scriptures. And if you have not yet received the Lord Jesus in your life, at the end of this video will be a prayer that you can pray to also ask Him to enter your life and to become the Lord of your life. But ensure that you do it with all the sincerity in your heart, because eternity waits. Now Psalm 34 verse 11 says, Come ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. We are supposed to teach ourselves and our children and others around us about the fear of the Lord. And on this little video, I'm going to try to do my little part to teach you who are watching this video, what the fear of the Lord is all about. Because we read in Proverbs 2, verse 1 to 9, My son, and that also includes my daughter, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding, yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. So if you read these few verses, you will see there are a few things that you and I, as children of God, have to do, 
so that we can also start to understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. What must we do? We must receive His words. We must hide His commandments with us. That means we must do what His commandments say. We must become obedient to His word. And we must incline our ears unto wisdom, godly wisdom, spiritual wisdom, not the wisdom of the world, godly wisdom. And we must apply our hearts to understanding. We must cry after knowledge. What knowledge? Not worldly knowledge. Worldly knowledge will not help you anything in eternity. So we must cry after the knowledge of God and lift up our voices for understanding. We must cry to the Lord and speak to the Lord and ask Him to give us understanding. And we must seek it as silver. We must search for it as hidden treasures. Then we will start to understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. My brother and sister, you know, if you only stand study those nine verses in Proverbs 2 verse 1 to 9. It'll actually take you a few weeks to really understand what every word means and what we can do according to every one of those words. But you see, if you just study your Bible, if you start to cry to the Lord, if you start to do His commandments, He will start to reveal His scriptures to you through His Holy Spirit. It will become knowledge to you, spiritual knowledge, godly knowledge, you will receive His wisdom and you will start to live the life that God wants you to live. But you see, He gives us a free will and a free choice. You can decide whether you still want to walk the road of the world, want to be like the world on the highway to hell, or do you want to be on that narrow little road going to heaven to ensure that we will be in, with Him in eternity, but then we must start to do what his Bible says, because he also tells us in Luke 6 verse 46, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you do not do what I say? So we must start to do what the Bible says, and then we will start to understand what the Bible says, because God gives wisdom, knowledge, insight, and understanding. And that is why it's such an important thing to be in a personal relationship with the creator of heaven and earth. Because then through his love for us, he starts to reveal these things to us and we can grow to get closer to him. At number one, let us now see what is the fear of the Lord according to the Bible. Job 28 verse 28 says, And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. So just there, we already see what the fear of the Lord is all about. The fear of the Lord is wisdom. Again, not worldly wisdom, not carnal wisdom, godly spiritual wisdom. If I understand the fear of the Lord, I will start to receive spiritual knowledge, spiritual wisdom, and that will help me to depart from evil. Because to depart from evil is understanding. Understanding what? understanding the fear of the Lord. The more I understand the fear of the Lord and the closer I get to God, the more I will depart from evil. Psalm 111 verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do His commandments. His praise endureth forever. So there we see it again. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of of wisdom. What kind of wisdom? Godly wisdom, spiritual wisdom, eternal wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do His commandments. So again, I said earlier, we must do His commandments. We must obey His commandments. And then we can also say, but His praise endureth forever. Because the moment that I start to understand what the fear of the Lord is all about, it makes me excited because the fear of the Lord does not push me away from God. No, the fear of the Lord actually pulls me closer to God, gives me more wisdom and understanding about who He is and what He expects from us and what waits for us in future. Proverbs 1 verse 7 says, 
the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. What knowledge? Godly, biblical, spiritual knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. So if I despise the wisdom that God wants to give me in the Bible and the instruction that His Holy Spirit wants to give me through His Word, I'm actually a fool because I'm playing with eternity if I don't listen to what God tells me and what He wants me to do. But the point here is, again, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, of God's knowledge. He wants to teach us knowledge, His knowledge. Remember, God's not going to teach you the philosophies of the world because the philosophies of the world are carnal. They are temporary. We are on our way to eternity with an eternal God. So he wants to teach us his eternal wisdom, his eternal knowledge, his eternal godly things. And we will be fools if we despise his wisdom and his instruction. Proverbs 9 verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So we see it over and over and over. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. So if I start to understand the fear of the Lord, I actually understand one thing. The fear of the Lord pulls me closer to God. The fear of the Lord gives me a bigger reverence and an awe for God. The fear of the Lord makes me love Him more. The fear of the Lord makes me want to become more like Him. So the fear of the Lord, my brother and sister, is a positive fear, if I can call it like that. It is a positive thing in my life. For if I understand the fear of the Lord, I will grow closer to the Lord, want to become more like Him. I will walk in His wisdom, His knowledge, His understanding of what, the, of what the Bible says. I will depart from evil. And what will that cause in my life? I will get more knowledge of God as the Holy One. I will receive more understanding of who He is in my life. Psalm 19 verse 9 says, The fear of the Lord is clean. Enduring forever. Let me just backtrack one step. I always say to people when you read in the King James Version of the Bible that I use, Lord in capital letters like that, L-O-R-D. Remember in the Hebrew it is written there, yod Hey vav Hey, because our Father's name in Hebrew is Yahweh. So the fear of Yahweh, the fear of the Lord, is clean. I said it's a positive thing. You see, the fear that comes from the devil, we will look at that just now, is a negative thing. It makes you afraid. It breaks you down, etc., etc. But the fear of the Lord is clean. Why? Because it pulls you closer to God. The fear of the Lord teaches you more about who God is. It gives you understanding about Him and His Word. That is what the fear of the Lord does. And it endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. So this is what we must also understand, that the fear of the Lord is clean and it endures forever. So my brother and sister, when you and I stand before the throne of God one day, we will be standing there also in the fear of the Lord. We will see Him as He is. We will be in awe and in reverence as we've never been in our entire lives when we really see God for who He is. But until we get there, the fear of the Lord is clean. The fear of the Lord has positive consequences in my life, as we will see now. The fear of the Lord endures forever because God is righteous and He wants us to become more like Him. He wants us to have an awe and a reverence and a love for Him that pulls us closer to Him. Because the closer we get to Him, the more we understand who He is, the, the more we want to become like He is, and the more obedient we become to His Word. And then what happens? Again, I, be, I have more awe and reverence and love for Him the closer I get to Him. The more wisdom I receive about what the Word of God tells me about who God is and how He wants us to live gives me a bigger love for Him, pulls me even closer to Him, gives me a bigger reverence for Him, a bigger awe about who He is as this awesome eternal God. Have you met Him yet? Have you received Him in your life yet? If not, remember the prayer at the end of this video. At number two, what is the fear of the Lord not? We have just discussed what the fear of the Lord is. Now, what is the fear of the Lord not? We see in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. 
but of power and of love and of a sound mind. This is a different fear. This is a fear that was not given by God. The fear of the Lord pulls me closer to God. But this, the spirit of fear that God has not given us, if God has not given me the spirit of fear, who gives us the spirit of fear? The devil. This is the negative one. This is the one that pulls me away and wants me to make me afraid and teaches me lies, telling me, you know, you don't want to get close to God. You must be so afraid of God that you want nothing to do with him. No, no, no. That's a lie. Don't fall into that trap. Because this is not the fear of the Lord. This is the fear of the enemy. This is the spirit of fear that comes from the devil. And I also have a YouTube video just on the spirit of fear that you can watch if you would like. So this comes from the devil. And it causes Havoc in people's lives, especially in these end times that we live in. Because we read in Luke 21, verse 25 and 26, that Jesus said, And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. This is what fear causes in people's lives. And we see it today in this pandemic time that we are living. People's hearts are failing them for fear about what's coming upon the earth. Why? Because you see, they are not ready for Jesus. They are not in a personal, intimate relationship with Jesus. Because if you know who Jesus is, if you know who God is, if you're in a relationship with him, if you love him, then you are ready for his coming. Then you are ready to die. You are ready to be with him in all eternity. But this fear is the fear that the enemy uses in these end times to kill people, to give them heart attacks, to give them strokes and many other different illnesses and sicknesses because they're so afraid and the people are perplexed. You see, the nations are in distress because of the things happening around us because they're not ready for the coming of our Lord. But you and I who understand we have knowledge, we have godly wisdom of what the word of God tells us. We are ready. We are not perplexed. We are not in distress. We are not dying of fear. We are ready. Why? Because we are living in the fear of the Lord. We are not bound by the fear of the enemy. Another verse that just confirms this, Proverbs 12 verse 25 says, Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it glad. And that word heaviness in Hebrew is deogo. It means anxiety or fear, heaviness or sorrow. So fear in the heart of man maketh it stoop. Now that maketh it stoop in the Hebrew is shocho. It means to depress. So fear in the heart of man depresses man. And that's why one of the other English uh, translations translated this verse as anxiety in the heart of man causes depression. You see, depression is not an illness. Depression is the spirit of fear. The spirit of fear, fear about my finances, fear about my future, fear about my marriage, fear about whatever. And that spirit of fear, which does not come from God, pulls me away from God and depresses me, pulls me into depression. And then I wonder what's going on. Now, this again is not the fear of the Lord. This is the fear that the enemy uses to kill people upon this earth. Because you know as well as I do, how many people that are bound in depression eventually end up in suicide. They kill themselves because they're so afraid. Afraid of the future. Afraid of not being ready. Afraid of um, not having finances or not having a job or whatever. You see, that's the fear that the enemy puts into their hearts. And their hearts are depressed. And they drink pills and they overdose and all these things happen. And people say, but what's going on? Uh, you see, they don't understand the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is not the fear of the enemy. The fear of the Lord is a positive thing, as I said. It pulls me closer to God. It gives me knowledge and understanding. And it makes me love him even more and look forward to his coming even more. Because I have knowledge and understanding of what his Holy Spirit teaches us in his word. But are you still listening to the voice of the fear of the enemy? The spirit of fear that comes from the devil. Now we must stand up and rebuke that and resist that in the name and in the power of Jesus Christ.
At number three, let us now look at some consequences of the fear of the Lord. What will be some of the consequences in my life when I do start to understand what the fear of the Lord is all about and start to actually do the fear of the Lord in my life? Psalm 25 verse 12 says, What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. So if you understand the fear of the Lord, you will be led by the Lord in the way that you will choose. The Holy Spirit will lead you because Romans 8.14 says, if you are led by the Holy Spirit, you are a son of God. That is what it is all about so that we can understand who we are. If we are in the fear of the Lord, if we understand the fear of the Lord, the Lord will teach us in the way that we should choose. 2 Chronicles 19 verse 9 says, And he charged them, saying, Thus shall ye do in the fear of the Lord. You see, there's the word. So we can do certain things in the fear of the Lord, faithfully and with a perfect heart. Again, if I understand the fear of the Lord, I will understand God wants me to be faithful. God wants me to have a perfect heart. Why do I understand that? Because I do the fear of the Lord. I walk in the fear of the Lord. I live in the fear of the Lord. I have the understanding of His Holy Spirit that He helps me by leading me, by revealing the scriptures to me, because I am living in the fear of the Lord. And then He helps me to become more faithful and to have a perfect heart. Psalm 15 verse 1 to 4 says, A Psalm of David, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle, who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness, and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is contempt, but he honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth to his own hurt, and changeth not. This person that does these things, he will abide in God's tabernacle. He will dwell in God's holy hill. He that walks uprightly, that works righteousness, God's way of doing things, that speaks the truth in his heart. He that does not backbite other people with his tongue, that does not do evil to his neighbor or take up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is contempt. So he does not go along with the vile persons and he honors them that fear the Lord. And he that sweareth to his own hurt and changes not. So even though he made a commitment that causes him damage, he will still stick to his word because he is a man of his word. And he also honors other people that lives in the fear of the Lord because he himself will be a man that lives in the fear of the Lord. Proverbs 8 verse 13 says, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate. What will be the consequences of the fear of the Lord in my life? Well, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. So I will also hate evil if I live in the fear of the Lord. If I understand the fear of the Lord. If I have the knowledge of the fear of the Lord. If I have the wisdom of the fear of the Lord. I will hate evil. Pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the froward mouth, the mouth that swears and curses and tells lies and, you know, tells these dirty jokes. I will hate that. Why? Because I live in the fear of the Lord and the fear of the Lord pulls me closer to God. The fear of the Lord gives me a love for God and an awe, a reverence and a respect for God that wants me to become more like him and less like the world. So the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. The fear of the Lord helps me to end the things in the world and do not partake in the things of the world anymore. Proverbs 10 verse 27 says, The fear of the Lord prolongeth days. So the fear of the Lord will also prolong my days, that I will have a long and a good life upon the earth. But the years of the wicked shall be shortened. You can see on the television and all over how many people who work wickedness and, and who live wicked lives how they don't have long lives. Proverbs 14 verse 26 and 27 says, In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. Strong confidence of what? Of what God is, of who God is, and of what He wants us to do. And His children shall have a place of refuge. So a person that understands the fear of the Lord, 
will also be able to say, but I know my children will have a place of refuge because I live in the fear of the Lord. I understand the wisdom of the Lord because such a person will understand that God says in Isaiah 59 verse 21 that he has a covenant with us for our children and our grandchildren. So a person that understands the fear of the Lord will also understand the covenant that God has with them regarding their children. And that's why this verse also says, in the fear of the Lord is strong confidence and his children shall have a place of refuge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. So again, what will be the consequences of the fear of the Lord in my life? It is a fountain of life. I will have a good life, but it will also help me to depart from the snares of death. Because the closer I get to God, the less I want to partake in the sinful ways of the world. The more I will hate evil, the more I will depart from evil. Because I have received the knowledge, the wisdom and the understanding of God. Proverbs 16 verse 6 says, By mercy and truth iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord men depart from evil. Again, so by mercy and truth... Where does mercy and truth come from? Only from Jesus Christ. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. It's taken out of your life. It is done with. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. So the more I live in the fear of the Lord, the more I will depart from evil. I will not partake in the sins of the world anymore because I'm getting closer to God on a daily basis. Proverbs 19 verse 23 says, The fear of the Lord tendeth to life. Again, a good life now and eternal life that waits. And he that hath it shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. So you see, the fear of the Lord is a positive thing in your life. The consequences that it will cause in your life will be positive consequences. But then, my brother and sister, you must make a decision to also start to walk in the fear of the Lord and to ask the Holy Spirit to teach you His wisdom, His knowledge. Go and read Proverbs 2 verse 1 to 9 again that we started with so that you can see, cry out to the Lord, ask Him to reveal these things to you so that you can also get closer to God. And what happened in the churches who walked in the fear of the Lord? In Acts 9 verse 31 we read, Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified, and walking in the fear of the Lord, and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost, were multiplied. So those first churches in the book of Acts, as long as they walked in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost, they were multiplied. But why is it true today? That many churches close down because they do not walk in the fear of the Lord anymore. Because they become like the world. They become businesses. They want to be like the world. They want to make the world feel accepted by being like the world. So they are not multiplied and eventually, unfortunately, they close down. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 11 says, Knowing therefore the terror, that word is also the fear of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are made manifest unto God. And I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. People say, but why do you keep on trying to persuade people to receive the Lord Jesus Christ? Why do you keep on telling the people about the gospel of Jesus Christ? Why can't you stop? Do you know why? Because we know the fear of the Lord. We understand the fear of the Lord. And if you understand the fear of the Lord and it pulls you closer to God and it makes you love him more, you love the world just as much as he loved the world. Remember, he died for the people in the world. That is why we will keep on persuading men because we don't want people to end up in hell because eternity is long and hell is very hot. I also have a YouTube video on hell it is also real. The Bible is very clear about that. That's why we persuade men because we understand the fear of the Lord. We understand that there is something that is so positive. You will want to do it the moment you understand it. So that's why we keep on persuading men. Why? Because we know the fear of the Lord. We know what it's all about. And we are made manifest unto God because of that. Because God sees what we are doing for Him as a result of the fact that we understand the fear of the Lord in our lives. Proverbs 13 verse 33 says, The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. And before honor is humility. You see, the fear of the Lord is instruction of wisdom. 
So the fear of the Lord instructs me in wisdom because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and of knowledge. So the Holy Spirit instructs me about God's wisdom, God's knowledge, God's insight, His spiritual leadership, etc. And that He's a holy God and He wants us to become more like Him and become obedient to Him. And Proverbs 22 verse 4 says, By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. By humility, Jesus was our example of true humility. And by the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. So if I live in the same humility that Jesus was humble, I also have a YouTube video on the humility of Christ. If we are humble like he was humble and we live in the fear of the Lord, he will entrust to us riches and honor and life. Again, a good life now and eternity that waits. My brother and sister, it is such an important thing to understand the fear of the Lord. If I understand what this book says about living in the fear of a living God, not being so afraid of him that I don't want to get close to him. No, no, no. To the contrary. It pulls me closer to him. The fear of the Lord wants me to come closer to God on a daily basis, to learn more about who he is, what his Bible says, and how we should live according to his word, how to become obedient to him, how to become more like him. What will happen in your heart? It will give you a bigger love for he that loved us first. But you will have to make that decision, my brother and sister. Are you still going to listen to the lies of the father of lies that puts fear in your heart? His fear that tries to pull you away from God? Or are you going to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal what I'm telling you today even more and make you walk and live according to the fear of the Lord that pulls you closer to God? The decision is yours. At number four, we will now discuss Jesus and the fear of the Lord. In Isaiah 11 verse 1 to 4, we read, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Who is that branch? That refers to Jesus Christ. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. This is what they call the sevenfold spirits of God. But all this would rest upon Jesus. Because this is a prophetic a reference to what Jesus would come to do and how he would live and how he would walk. He would have the fear of the Lord because he would have the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor, and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. These prophetic references were already fulfilled, some of them, at Jesus' first coming. He also came to earth and he had upon him the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom and understanding. You see, godly wisdom and godly understanding. That is what Jesus had. The spirit of counsel and might. This is the way he walked. He gave counsel. He had mighty miracles working through him. The spirit of knowledge. Because remember, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. Because the fear of the Lord gives understanding. So Jesus walked in all these things. He did all these things at his first coming. At his second coming, he will do the following. He will judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. And with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. My brother and sister understand one thing. When Jesus came to earth the first time. He came as the Lamb of God who was slain for us upon the cross so that we can receive forgiveness of our sins. But when he comes again the second time, he will be coming as the Lion of Judah who will rule the nations with a rod of iron, a scepter of iron. And he will slay them with his mouth, but he will rule in righteousness. So at the second coming, these things will happen where he will rule them with a rod of iron. So don't become confused. When Jesus comes the second time, he does not come as the Lamb of God anymore. 
He comes as the Lion of Judah, who will come to rule upon the earth, according to the order of Melchizedek, as king and priest upon this earth, because then he will be the political ruler of the whole earth, and he will be the spiritual ruler of the whole earth when he comes again. But Jesus understood the fear of the Lord. He walked in the fear of the Lord, and he also did what the Bible said according to the fear of the Lord. At number five, let us now look at you will be blessed. Isaiah 33 verse 5 and 6 says, The Lord is exalted. Who is that? Yahweh is exalted. For he dwelleth on high. He hath filled Zion with judgment and righteousness. And wisdom and knowledge. Look at this again. We keep on coming back to wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom and knowledge. Godly wisdom and godly knowledge. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Can you see? If you start to live in the fear of the Lord, if you start to understand the fear of the Lord, if you start to do the things the Bible says you will do when you understand the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord will be your treasure. It will be a blessing in your life. Because Psalm 112 verse 1 says, Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. Can you see, my brother and sister? You will be blessed if you fear the Lord and if you delight greatly in his commandments. Because in John 14 verse 15, Jesus also said, If you love me, keep my commandments. See, if I love God, because I understand the fear of the Lord that pulls me closer to Him, that gives me an awe, a fear, a reverence, and a respect, and a love for Him that pulls me closer to Him, I will also delight greatly in His commandments. And delighting in His commandments then includes doing what He says, doing what His commandments teach us to do, becoming obedient to His word. Psalm 115, verse 11 and 13 say, Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. And again, if I understand the fear of the Lord, I will trust in the Lord because I will know He is a faithful God. He is a righteous God. He never changes. But I will only really get to that point if I understand the fear of the Lord. Because ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. See, when I start to trust in the Lord, I will, I will also understand that He is my help and my shield. He will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. He will bless them that fear the Lord. You will be blessed if you fear the Lord, both small and great. That small and great can refer to people who are still small in faith and those who are great in faith or those who are still young in faith and those who are older in faith, or young children and adults, whoever, if you fear the Lord, my brother and sister, no matter how old you are, no matter how small you think you are in faith, or how great you think you are in faith, you will be blessed if you fear the Lord. Psalm 128 verse 1 and verse 4 says, A song of degrees, blessed is everyone, that feareth the Lord. Can you see? It's repeated over and over. You will be blessed if you understand the fear of the Lord and if you live in the fear of the Lord and if you do the fear of the Lord. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in His ways. Of course, if you fear the Lord and you understand His knowledge, you understand His wisdom, you understand what His Word says, you will walk in His ways because it will pull you closer to Him, will want you to become more like Him because you love Him. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. It's repeated over and over. For the ladies now, Proverbs 31 verse 30 says, Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. My sister, I tell you today, it's not about what you wear or about your external beauty or about the body you have or whatever. It's all about, do you fear the Lord? Yes or no? Because favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. And I tell you today, my sister, if you fear the Lord, you will be praised either by your husband 
or your children or by other Christians around you and one day by God himself who will say, well done, my daughter. I'm so proud of you. But then, my sister, you make the decision today. Are you going to be a woman that fears the Lord? Or are you pulled away by the fear of the, of the world, listening to the devil, being pulled into depression? Or are you standing up and saying, no, I want to be different in my house. I also want to be an example to my husband and my children of a woman that fears the Lord. At number six, let us now discuss all that fear the Lord, praise him. Psalm 22 verse 23 says, ye that fear the Lord, Praise Him. You see, the moment you understand the fear of the Lord, my brother and sister, you can do nothing other but praise the Lord. Because then you understand who He is as this almighty, omnipotent, omniscient being. God Almighty. And if you understand that, because you understand the fear of the Lord, you will praise Him. All ye the seed of Jacob, glorify Him and fear Him. All ye the seed of Israel. That was the nation of Israel, but we today are his children and we can also praise him, glorify him and fear him because we are also, remember, the descendants of Abraham through our faith in Jesus Christ. Psalm 118 verse 4 says, Let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endureth forever. Again, we will do that if we understand the fear of the Lord. If we live in the fear of the Lord, if we have his wisdom, his knowledge, his understanding, if we understand who he is as the Holy One, we will also say that his mercy endureth forever. You, Because you cannot do anything else. You understand what his mercy is all about because you are so thankful that he saved you. Psalm 135 verse 20 says, Bless the Lord, O house of Levi. Ye that fear the Lord, bless the Lord. Now, who was Levi? The Levites were the priests and they were the ones that did service in the tabernacle of Moses and in the temple of Solomon. But who are the priests today? Today, the Bible says, you and I, as New Testament believers, are kings and priests unto our God. So we as priests must fear the Lord. And if we understand the fear of the Lord, as I've said it over and over now, we will understand it is a positive thing in our lives. It pulls me closer to God. It wants me to become more like him and really be an example to others on how a priest of God should live according to the word of God. At number seven, let us now see there will come a day that what will happen? Psalm 33 verse eight says, let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. My brother and sister, that has not happened yet. That is one of the outstanding prophecies in the Bible that will still come to be fulfilled, where all the earth will fear the Lord and all the inhabitants of the world will stand in awe of him. At this stage, most of the world does not want anything to do with God. They don't understand the fear of the Lord and they're not in awe of him because they're so busy with evolution and with science and all these other things, pulling them away from God. So this day is still coming. And I so look forward to that day when every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And they will then understand the fear of the Lord and they will then stand in awe of him. Psalm 102 verse 16 says, So the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth thy glory. Again, that day is still coming. That the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth thy glory. At this stage, the kings of the earth don't acknowledge God. They don't acknowledge his glory. So that day is still coming, my brother and sister. And you and I who are ready will see the fulfillment thereof. Isaiah 59 verse 19 and 20 says, So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. That means there will come a day that they will fear the Lord from the east to the west. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him and the Redeemer shall come to Zion and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. This day is coming. 
when Jesus will be sitting upon his throne in the temple in Jerusalem after the seven years of tribulation, this day is still coming. And then they will fear the name of the Lord from the east to the west. And he will be God upon the earth. What a wonderful future to look forward to. Are you already looking forward to this, my brother and sister? Or are you still saying, no, 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 I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get closer to him by spending time with his word, spending time with him, asking the Holy Spirit to reveal these things to you, showing you what he teaches us in his word, how we should live in the fear of the Lord, how to become obedient to the word and how to become obedient to him, how to love him even more. And what will happen? You will be ready. And you will cry out like the rest, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, because the spirit and the bride says, come. If you say you're part of the bride, how can you say, don't come? Then you cannot call yourself part of the bride. So then there is room for improvement, my brother and sister. There is room to grow in the spirit by the power of the Holy Spirit, living according to the word, understanding the fear of the Lord, getting closer to God. Loving him even more, receiving a bigger awe, reverence, respect and love for our almighty God. At number eight, let us now end with beware. Isaiah 29 verse 13 to 15 says, Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, but look at the blue part now. And their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. In other words, it does not come out of their hearts. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder for the wisdom of their wise men. In other words, the worldly wise men, the wisdom of their wise men shall perish. And the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. It will flee away. Because that wisdom, that worldly wisdom of their wise men and their prudent men will mean nothing in the sight of the Lord and before the throne of God. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. And their works are in the dark. And they say, who seeth us and who knoweth us? God does. But you see, many of these people have this shine of being godly men and living according to the word but they only honor God with their lips but their hearts are far from him and their fear of the Lord is taught by the precept of men they say oh yeah okay and I know what the fear of the Lord is all about but who sees me in any case if I do this and who sees me in any case if I keep on sinning and God does my brother and sister so don't think you can hide your sin from God and don't let the fear of the Lord in your life be a precept of men. Start to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal the true fear of the Lord in your heart. Because in Malachi 1 verse 6, God says, A son honoreth his father, and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is mine honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Saith the Lord of hosts unto you, O priests that despise my name. And ye say, Wherein have we despised thy name? Even Christians to this very day, they just keep on sinning. You know, but because we're in the grace of the Lord, God loves us just as we are. You know, we priests of God, but I can keep on sinning. I can do this. I can do that because, you know, I'm free in the grace of Jesus. And by his grace, I'm saved. God says, O priests that despise my name, but you say, wherein have we despised thy name? See, when we understand who God is, when we understand the fear of the Lord, we will really understand who He is as the Holy One. And a holy God cannot accept us to keep on sinning. We cannot get closer to God and keep on sinning. Because the closer I get to God, the more I understand the fear of the Lord, the more I will hate that which is evil. The more I will depart from that which is evil. I cannot part take in that which is evil any longer. So if I call myself a king and a priest for God in the New Testament, but I keep on sinning and I say, but wherein have I despised the name of God? In this, 
in saying that, but you are free in the grace of God and you can do whatever you want. God doesn't mind. I tell you today, God minds, my brother and sister. And that is why Matthew 10 verse 28 says, And fear not them which kill the body. People, don't fear people. Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Fear him. Fear him. Know who he is. And as I said, if you understand his fear, it will actually pull you closer to him. And you will not be worried about hell anymore. But if you despise his truth, O priests, if you don't give him the fear of the Lord, O priests, and you say, but who sees us? Beware. Proverbs 1 verse 27 to 31 say, When your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Why? Look at the blue part now. For that they hated knowledge. What knowledge? Spiritual, godly, eternal knowledge. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Why? Because they chose the fear of the world. The fear of the enemy to live according to the world the standards of the world they did not depart from evil they did not depart from their wicked ways they would none of my counsel god says they despised all my reproof therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices this will happen to you my brother and sister if you do not live according to the fear of God because you hated his knowledge, you did not want to learn what the Bible tells you to, to learn, you did not want to become obedient to his word, then when your fear comes as desolation and your destruction comes as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish shall come upon you and you cry out to the Lord, God says, you will not find me because you hated my knowledge and you did not choose the fear of the Lord. So there is a decision to make, my brother and sister. Otherwise, you will eat the fruit of your own way and be filled with your own devices. Proverbs 15 verse 16 says, Better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. Yes, I would rather have just a little in my life in assets or furniture or cars or houses or whatever the case may be. Better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. So if it's all about your assets and about your wealth and about your cars and about your homes, my brother and sister, you are busy down the wrong path. Because better is little with the fear of the Lord. And when you walk in the fear of the Lord and God starts to bless you, you will testify to that. And not say, but you see, these are the things that I bought with my own hands and I built up this business and I did this and I did that. That is not the fear of the Lord. So it's better to have little with the fear of the Lord than a great treasure and trouble therewith. Proverbs 23 verse 17 says, Let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. My brother, my sister, do not envy the sinners who seem to just keep on growing in riches and they don't fear the Lord and they don't want to f do the things of God, don't envy them because their end eternally is not the same end where you will be going. So don't envy the sinners, but be in the fear of the Lord all the day long. God's fear, the positive fear, the thing that pulls you closer to God, that teaches you more about eternity, about his wisdom, his understanding. Be in that. Walk in that. Live in that. Depart from evil. Don't envy the sinners. Don't envy all their possessions. You be who God wants you to be. And he will bless you in your life now. And he waits for you in eternity. Revelation 21 verse 6 to 8 says, And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega. This is Jesus speaking. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son and daughter, of course. 
But look at the blue part now. But the fearful, this is now the fear of the world, the devil's kind of fear. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. My brother and sister, if you know who you are in the fear of the Lord, if you live in the fear of the Lord and not the fear of the world, and you're not pulled away by the fear of the world, because the fear of the world, the fear of the enemy wants to pull you away from God. And if you allow that, beware that this might be the place where you can also end up. Don't let yourself be pulled into the fear of the enemy, the fear of the world. Live according to the fear of God, because that will pull you closer to God. And then you will know this second death is not applicable to you. Because if you understand the fear of the Lord, if you live in the fear of the Lord and you understand what the Bible tells us about who God is and the fact that Jesus is on his way to come and take us to be with him. I personally believe in the rapture of the saints prior to the seven years of tribulation. I also have a YouTube video that you can watch about Jesus is coming again. I believe that. So when he comes to get us, all those who understand the fear of the Lord and who live in the fear of the Lord, they will be ready. But the rest who did allow the devil to pull them away from God, where will they end up? That second death will not be applicable to you and I if we live in the fear of the Lord according to the word of God because we are in a personal, intimate relationship with a living God. He's not dead. Remember our God's not dead. He's a living God. And he also says so himself in Revelation 1 verse 17 and 18. Fear not, I'm the first and the last. I'm he that liveth and was dead and behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. And all honor and glory goes to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So let us pray together. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we glorify your name. Thank you, Father, that you loved us so much that you want to teach us the fear of the Lord through your Holy Spirit. That you want to teach us who you are as the Holy One. That you want to give us spiritual, godly knowledge, wisdom and understanding. And I pray, Lord, that the people watching this video will really ask your Holy Spirit to reveal this message to them even more. To cry out to you for knowledge, spiritual knowledge, godly knowledge, godly wisdom. And that your Holy Spirit will teach them and lead them. Lord, so that we can all walk into your heaven one day and hear, well done, good and faithful servant. We so look forward to that day. And Lord Jesus, we so look forward to your coming to take us to be with you. And that is why we keep on crying out, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. The Spirit and the Bride says, come Lord. We love you, Lord. Amen.